this is sort of a brief a breakdown on it and there's probably other types of things that they provide us with uh, also but uh, in the systems of storage there for example your capacitors would store the electricity and your coils or your inductors would store the magnetic uh, field and you've got equal amount of each uh, anytime you have electricity it's a two-sided coin you have uh, equal amounts of each uh, there's no way around it because when the electron moves uh, forward or is disturbed, uh, it's going to give off magnetic energy. When it pops back to where it was, it's going to give off electrical impulse. So uh, you're going to see both of those. Yeah, I have a number of other uh, slides, so we'll need to look at them. Uh, okay, uh, you're familiar with the power triangle and how that works. Uh, uh, for example, here, uh, the power triangle system one there is your L1 coil and your L2 coil would be the power system two. Now the electrons are not moving from uh, number one to number two. Uh, as you noticed a while ago, the L1 coil is uh, covered over with plastic and that's just fine because uh, we don't want any of the electricity to be uh, jumping around or sparking or moving. It's the uh, magnetic flux lines that we're interested in. So in case of uh, conventional energy, we've got uh, uh, atoms A and B there, and uh, A would be your volts uh, times amps. Uh, that's what's inside the wall before you turn the switch on. When you ground it, uh, then you've got uh, uh, time which comes into it, which would be your volts times amps times time, which you've got watts or useful energy at that point. And that's the conventional way of doing electricity. Now, uh, on C there, we have uh, resonant energy, which uh, is not uh, actually going anywhere or doing anything except that it's resonating. And in the process of resonating, resonating, it's creating uh, lines of magnetic flux. And uh, your electrical people will tell you that uh, number C there is wattless energy or useless energy. Uh, what they're not allowing for is the fact that uh, at resonance, uh, you have a tremendous uh, intensity of magnetic flux lines, which will transfer beautifully over to another electrical system. And that's uh, what's happening between your L1 and your L2 coils. Now, once you get your L2 coil going, uh, it's going to be moving from the base of the coil towards the top of the coil. The, as the uh, magnetic flux starts building on each turn there, it's transferring over to the next turn, and it's carrying with it what it had, and it's uh, multiplying by the number of... Uh, by the flux lines that are being active there, so you're getting an amplification of the magnetic flux lines. These magnetic flux lines are building in intensity as they go towards the top of the coil, and they reach their maximum uh, at or near the top of the coil. Now, at that point, uh, you've got high voltage with uh, not a lot of amps, but the amp business is not going to be uh, a problem for us because we're not going to be uh, using uh, the system that we have at the top there. We're only going to be using the lines of magnetic flux. Yes? Does this unit, uh, does, do you have anything, uh, any load on this device at all? Well, uh, before you can put a load on them, you have to put it into a capacitor bank and, uh, and uh, get your thing built uh, uh, up so that uh, you have a something to put a load against. If you try to put a load directly onto it, it's going to detune it and you'll end up with nothing. This is going to be your L1, this is going to be your L2, and this is going to be an L3. Remember I said that uh, the lines of magnetic flux on the uh, distal end or the busy end of the Tesla coil uh, are very large in number. Okay, well basically what's happening there is that uh, this is the offtake that goes into the diode uh, bridge that you see there. That diode uh, bridge is built on the underside of a plastic case uh, 
one half of that plastic case. It's a little box that you build uh, electronic projects in. And uh, coming out, uh, uh, what you're interested in here, this is going to be your plus DC, and this is going to be your minus DC. These are your two AC things going into the diode bridge. Got a generator because uh, the uh, uh, generators don't make electricity. They simply, uh, by the coils and the magnets moving in relation to each other, they upset the background balance. And when that happens, well, then uh, uh, you've got uh, energy available. And if you have a way of uh, collecting it, you, uh, you've got energy. And a uh, coil system, uh, they, uh, like in a uh, normal Tesla coil, they're normally uh, high and skinny and that sort of thing. That's the wrong way to go if you're wanting uh, amps and stuff because the length is volts and the diameter is amps. So if you get the right combination of the of the this versus this, then you got uh, you got plenty of amps and plenty of volts. Uh, I've found out how to work that system now. And so I've got a lot of things uh, which uh, don't really on the market exist. They exist in people's minds, but they're not, uh, uh, they, uh, there's no, not a demand for them. So uh, uh, on the electrical side, uh, you're pretty well boxed in and all the rules uh, and the books and things, uh, you're in Ohm's Law and all that sort of thing. If you're in a closed system and you're boxed in, uh, Ohm's law works, but if you get over, uh, and that's on your electrical side, but when you move over onto the uh, counterpart of it, the magnetic side, uh, none of those laws apply. Right. And uh, uh, it's a whole different system, and most of the critical information there is missing intentionally. Uh, uh, we, you have neither uh, uh, on matter or energy, uh, it's neither destroyed or consumed. It, everything is always there. It just simply flips over into some other temporary uh, arrangement, and then it will end up uh, going back to where it came from. So nothing has been used. So therefore, when the power company sends you an electric bill for electricity that you uh, use, you did not use any. <laughs> it just simply flowed uh, through the system and went on out and went back into the system so it's not uh, not used or, or worn out or degraded or that's not the end of it at all uh, up here okay uh, and uh, what's happening is the magnetic flux and this uh, piece of metal here is set up such that any amount of coils you put up here will duplicate whatever's being put in here. So, uh, how do you explain the phenomenon? Okay, well, let me show you what happens when you drop it. See how fast it goes? It's heavy. Yes. And. Uh, when you put it inside this, uh, it's non-magnetic material, copper, and you spin it. In case anybody thinks there's some obstruction in there, what? if not... Inducing its own... Uh, this is from uh, Bill Beatty out in Cal California. It's one of his favorite toys. Mm. So uh, it uh, demonstrates a effect of uh, uh, gravity and nullification of gravity. Don't, uh, don't spin it and drop it. Just drop don't it straight through. Don't spin and drop it. Well, uh, uh, the reason you spin it is because no, it don't, don't uh, enforces the, uh, what's going on. If you just dro simply drop it, yeah, just it drop will it. still... Uh, it just takes a little longer when you spin it, and that's why I did that. Uh, to sort of emphasize uh, uh, how it was uh, slowing things down.
at it for a couple of minutes here, and then we'll start talking about it. There's a number of unnecessary parts there that were actually put in there because uh, people expect to see them. <laughs> actually, <laughs> uh, on this, uh, you can take uh, everything back this way and take it off of there, and it will work just fine. You can also take the spark gap off of it, and it will still work just fine. The top is the one which you normally expect to see. That's where your dampening effect happens when you, uh, you're seeing these things on the oscilloscope, on a oscilloscope screen, and it's showing the uh, uh, analog, or whatever you want to call it, uh, showing the cycling. And it starts out with a certain amount of energy, and that gradually uh, diminishes. Okay, the second one there is another setting on that same uh, resonant circuit and uh, with a slightly different adjustment. And uh, it shows an envelope of uh, energy uh, very similar to FM carrier. And uh, in FM, uh, you have the compression of these uh, cycles, uh, which takes the place of uh, the, in the analog uh, system where you have uh, various uh, modulations on it. But, uh, and the third one is a particular arrangement of the grounding shunt, uh, which means that its ability to communicate with the uh, uh, electron source, which would be your grounding, and the, the uh, resistance there is like a dam on a large body of water, and it uh, lets the electrons uh, through and they get caught behind this dam. Uh, this whole device is like a pump. All it's doing is, uh, like the dominoes we were talking about, is tripping uh, the electrons here, and that electron's trip in the next one, and uh, this whole bunch of electrons in all directions are being tripped, and each time one of those is, would be tripped, it gives off a magnetic uh, impulse first, and then when it comes back on that infinity loop, it gives off an electrical impulse room full of ping pong balls and you get them all going in uh, you know many directions and they're bouncing around there's a certain amount of energy in that room but if you line these ping pong balls up uh, and you can do it uh, magnetically and uh, then all of a sudden you've got a tremendous amount of energy that was not present before and this is what resonance is it's what superconductivity is and uh, that sort of thing yeah, that is, that is the shunt in the uh, uh, re resonant radio frequency uh, uh, configuration that uh, produces the dam that keeps the energy. Uh, it, once it gets to oscillating inside the system, if it, uh, it can come in, but it can't get out. Unless it uh, is hooked into another system. Yeah, well, it's a simply a blocking device which uh, uh, keeps your resonant uh, coil system, which uh, normally you have a capacitor and a coil, and uh, you've got them uh, like this. Well, in our case, uh, we've uh, put both the capacitor and the coil in one uh, wire, and uh, we've eliminated uh, some components that are subject to fail. When we do that, capacitors are subject to fail, so you've actually made a device which is uh, less likely to fail because the electrons are not going through the wire and there's no dissipation factor and they're spinning on the outside of the wire, uh, so uh, uh, you can have uh, this uh, corona effect. <laughs> See, I told you we, they were somewhere else. Okay, just put them on the table here and whenever I get to them, I... I've got some magnets here, which I want to demonstrate something for you. See the, uh, how much voltage would you think it would take to penetrate uh, a quarter of an inch of PVC? It'd take a lot of it, wouldn't it? Uh, maybe, even, uh, maybe even a million volts. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you how the magnetic effect, uh, it varies from, uh, Okay, okay, your induction is from magnetic effect. So uh, you could take these uh, wires, they can have a covering on them, 
they can be encapsulated, you can put them in solid concrete or plastic or ins anything else inside, completely insulated from everything. And these wires, when the induction effect uh, starts taking place, which is magnetic, uh, it doesn't see any of it. Now that's why your induction works so well. <laughs>